sorry. Sorry. There's no room on mine. Now for Mo. Better late than never, eh? Yes. Mr. Hickey, you wanted to see me? Yes, just wanted to remind you about the 360. It's just honest feedback on a senior member of staff, a few from the ranks, so to speak. Miss Naylor, are you aware of this? Shadow Jack, for the day, collate your thoughts. It's all completely confidential. Well, that's hardly a fair assessment, is it? Tara's my F1. It's my job to give her a hard time. And I'm certain HR will take that into account. They'll see it's not actual bullying. What is all that? Mo's transplant papers. I've taken over her admin since she's been on leave. So hang on. Where is my proposal document amongst all of that carnage? Rhyme again. My research study on congenital heart operations. I left it on your desk last week. Ah, yes. Elliot, you promised you would read it. I have to have your signed approval before I can put it in with Hanson. Look, it, it, it's here somewhere. I, I've, I've just been very busy. Oh, but you managed to find the time to sort through Mo's mountain of paperwork. What about my project? Ah, oh, that reminds me, before I forget, Mo. Um, uh, girls in admin will have her address, won't they? Elliot, you will read it, won't you? The, the deadline's tomorrow. Yes, yes, of course, yes. I'll, I'll, I'll read it l later, maybe. Here to see Elliot Hope. Take a seat, please. Uh, you see, Mo asked me to take her on, and, well, uh, I agreed to, but now, with the, uh, you know, appraisals on top, I'm up to my eyes. I can't possibly fit her in. It's an extremely moving story, Elliot, but why are you telling me? Well, I was wondering if you could do the op. It's a congenital condition, right up your street. And just reschedule her. I can't. I promise, Mo. Oh, I see. But a promise to me can go out the window. Come on, Jack. This is about comrades covering each other's backs. Not personal projects. It concerns a patient. Mo's patient. Yes, and now my patient. Our patient. It's like brothers in arms. Well, sisters, you know what I mean. All for one, one for all. And she is a very special lady. Annabelle Casey. You know the actress. She was around in the 70s. She's in that film. The disaster movie with the bomb. No. Okay. Look, if you take the actress, I promise I'll read your proposal. Today. Signed and approved. Promise as in promise, not, oh, it's here somewhere, I'll read it later, maybe. I'll lock myself in the office this afternoon. Fine, deal. Hmm. What's the other coffee for? Me? That could be nice to my F1 once in a while. I have to give her a 360 feedback. Ah. She's obviously hoping her little mentee doesn't give her the same treatment she gives the F1s. Or maybe she actually likes me. Don't be silly. Uh, she doesn't like anyone. You've got her worried. You should save her the moment. Checking for poison. Yes, love. Oh, well, Matthew, my agent, I suppose. He should be here in a minute, though. He promised to come. He'll give you his details then. Yeah. Right. Mrs. Casey, you have our kappa, correct? Yes, I've had it since birth, apparently. Never a symptom till I was 63. And um, it's Miss Casey, actually. Yes, well, I'm here to sort it for you. As I'm sure you've been told, your scans show that the left coronary artery is dilated. Sorry? There's really no need to be sorry. Nurse, actually, can you organise an ECG and echo, some pre-op bloods and the usual FBC and ease? No, I mean, sorry, who are you? I'm your surgeon, Jack Naylor, cardiothoracic consultant. Ah, uh, no. Now, at first I had a lovely but very pregnant lady, and then I met a man with a beard. He was going to do it. Mm, and now you have me. This isn't past the parcel. Well, it does seem to be today. So, I'll be reattaching your artery to the main aorta. It's very routine. Maybe for you, love, but not for me. No. I want the man with the beard back. At least he looks the part. You look like you sell beauty products. <laughs> well, I've taken the day off from giving makeovers to perform major heart surgery. Sweetheart, I've made tougher people than you cry. Now, I want the magician, not the assistant. 
Others here may perform tricks. I perform miracles, so, sweetheart, it's showtime or home time. You decide. It's either that or um, I'm afraid we'll have to find you another day when I am available. No, that is not possible. I'm coming out of retirement. This is an important time for me. A so-called up-and-coming writer has got a new play on at the Old Vic. Anyway, his people called my agent. So you see. Sorry, see what? Well, the lead. It's perfect for me. So I have to be fully recovered before the time rehearsals start. Illness is not an excuse in my profession. Besides, you did promise. Well, in that case, Ms. Naylor is definitely your best choice. She is an exceptional surgeon, in some ways superior to me in the field of congenital heart conditions. She's a child. I will not be fobbed off with the apprentice. Well, yes, you see, in my profession, you tend to have to be highly skilled to do what I do. Real talent. You can't just stroll up to the director and smile. I am not having that skinny, rude girl anywhere near me. Now, you promised me that you would do this operation today. If that doesn't happen, I shall hold you personally responsible for ruining my return to the stage. Understood? Oh, I'm afraid they're right. You can't take your mobile into theatre with you. Oh, but I'm expecting an important phone call, the one I told you about. OK, well, why don't I look after it for you? And you could pretend to be my assistant if it rings. Oh, well, I wasn't oh, going to pick it you, up. Bless you, darling. You don't know what this means to me. Oh, but we shook hands. There's no way I'll have time to read it now. But what happened to comrades and all that? Yes, exactly. Brothers in arms, not sisters doing it for themselves. You didn't keep your part of the deal. Uh, well, it's not my fault that the patient's unhinged. Jack, if you'd have the slightest intention of helping me out, you would have held that tongue of yours. She deserved it. Yes, but I didn't. I asked you just this once for a favour. And I asked you for a favour, but you were too busy showering Mother Courage with kumquats. And why is that, do you think? Why does she get a fruit basket from the whole department? Because she needs her five a day. Because she will go out of her way for anyone proud to be part of this team. Mentor her juniors rather than terrify them. Oh, well, bully for her. Just because I don't go into this team spirit stuff, no. And this, no, and this group hugs, no. why should I be penalised for you it? You seem to think you owe nothing to anyone. That you can just opt out, fly solo when it suits, and I'm all right, Jack attitude. Well, it's not all right, Jack. And if you think that I would prioritise a favour to Mo over you, well, quite frankly, you're not wrong. You okay? Why could you not okay, are you? Talk to me. I'm fine, just leave it. Back up from me. What well, that'd be like doing you a favour, being nice. Look, I admit, it's not all entirely your fault. Annabelle Casey isn't an easy woman. Does that mean you're gonna read and approve my proposal today? Okay. Okay. Are you coming or not? I'll be there in two ticks, comrade. The epicardium sheet is too weak, in my opinion. Yes, mine too. Right, so a graft it is. That's the way I'd go. Good, right. Thank you, Miss Ayla. Let me get on with your day now. Oh, well, I could start harvesting the mammary artery, if you like. I've agreed to read your proposal. There's no reason for you to stay. But you're up against it, aren't you? It'll be quicker if I help. I wouldn't want to force you into helping anyone. Elliot. Okay. I get it. You're right. I do feel a little... Well, you know. Like I should stay. If you'll have me, I want to help. What is that? In a... It's the closest to one you're going to get. Okay, thank you. Ness, um, could you pass the diathermy and uh, clamps to Ms. Naylor, please? Anyway, besides that, I'll provide you with a bit more time, Elliot. I don't know how slowly you read.
hello, Annabelle Casey's Despite office. Despite not being quite what we expected to find, with the expert help of the um, skinny, rude girl, we managed to pull you through. Well, I suppose I owe you a thank you. My pleasure. Is there, um, is there any news from my agent? I don't think so. You got her ladyship's phone? Oh, yeah. I took a message on it, but I don't know how to word it. Why don't you just tell her? Because she might shoot the messenger. Come on then, tell me and I'll do it. Really? Yes, really. So out with it quick before my nice oh, nice on. Not quite the comeback I was expecting. Well, at least you're back. That serves me right. My reputation still precedes me. Can't outgrow that, it seems. Thank you for telling me. That was a very brave thing to do. Well, I've delivered worse news to people. I got you wrong. You're rude, but you're up front, no frills, honest. I like that. Yes, well, apparently I should show that I have a soft side. Play nicely with the other children. Bit of advice from one sharp tongue to another. Don't bite the hand that feeds you. Sometimes they're your only friends. I can't believe you did that for me. Just taking one for the team, Tara. Maybe you can write that in your book instead of all of that flack. Flack? I'm writing notes on, like, how you don't let anyone give you grief. I want to learn how you do it. You know, take the command like that. I think it's brilliant. Well, good. Yes. How's your work? This is great. So are we on, then? Of course. I'm sure Hanson will go for it. Really persuasive piece of work. Why can't you be this charming all the time? Oh, come on. You wouldn't have me any other way, I'd miss it. I certainly couldn't function without you. Thank you. Well, somebody's cheered up. So, where are we going? For what? There are drinks with our names on them. How about we just skip the drinks? <laughs>